I welcome, I welcome all of you to the class. As far as the today's class is concerned, today is our lecture number three. Today is our lecture three. And in the previous lectures, we have completed the method of solving the nonlinear equations using the bisection method. And today we will be discussing one more method of solving the nonlinear equations. And the method which we'll be discussing today is known as the false position method. Today we'll be talking about false position method. As far as the false position method is concerned, what is the basic technique for of false position method for solving the nonlinear equations? Let's suppose we have a function of x. Let's suppose we have y as a function of x. Let's suppose this is a nonlinear function. Let's suppose we have a nonlinear function. And the graph of this equation is, say, for example, like this. This is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. Let's suppose the graph is, say, for example, like this. Right? A nonlinear curve. If we are asked, what is the solution of the equation f of x, y as a function of x, is equal to 0? That is, if we are asked to solve this equation, we have to find the values of x. Okay, we have to find the values of x at which our f of x becomes equal to 0. Right? So we know the value of x at which our function becomes equal to 0 is this one. Okay, this is from the graph. This is, let's call this as x solution. This is the solution. Fine. This solution, this is our function y as a function of x. And in this function, if we substitute x is equal to x solution, then f of x solution becomes equal to 0. Fine. Now, how we solve this, how we obtain the value of the solution using the false point method? What we do, we assume two values. We assume x1 and x2 as two values or two solutions of f of x equal to zero. First, at least I can say that we assume x1 and x2. We select x1 and x2. Let me write here. We select, we begin our solution procedure with two values as x1 and x2, fine. So let me see here. At x1, the value of the function is, the value of the function is f of x1. And at x2, the value of the function is this much. Let me call this as f of x2. Fine. Or let's write down the coordinates of these two points. We write down the coordinates of these two points. The coordinates of this point are, the coordinates of this point are x1 comma f of x1. This is x and y coordinate. And the coordinates of this point are x coordinate is x2 and y coordinate is f of x2. Fine. Now, we have to move this x1 and x2 sufficiently close to this x solution. Okay. How do we do it? The solution of this equation f of x is equal to 0 is not at x1. The solution of f of x is equal to 0 is not at x2. The solution lies somewhere here. This is the point, okay, which is the solution point for us. How do we approach, how do we reach to this x solution using the false point method? So what the method says, we first of all draw the straight line. We start with a straight line between f of x1 and f of x2. We have first of all assumed two values, 
x1 and x2 obtain the value of the function at x is equal to x1 we said that is f of x1 obtain the value of function at x is equal to x2 we say that is f of x2 now draw a straight line between x f of x1 and f of x2 the straight line is like this fine so this is the straight line which we are drawing between f of x1 and f of x2 fine and look this straight line happens to intersect this straight line is intersecting our x axis at this very point okay we call this point as x3 okay so this point is x3 fine now what we have to do we have to move this x3 very very close to this x solution such that once we substitute the value of this x3 back into our function f of x is equal to 0 f of x it should become equal to 0 okay so first of all we assume the value of x1 and x2 calculated f of x1 and f of x2 and we are drawing a line between f of x1 and f of x2 the point of interaction the, the point of intersection of our straight line with the x axis we are taking that as x3 okay so let me write here we started with step number one was assume we assume x1 and x2 again the same condition is on the x1 and x2 as we had in case of the bisection method okay that is f of x1 and x2 are to be selected in such a way such that f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 is less than zero this is the condition for the selection of x1 and x2 that is f of x1 and f of x2 should be of opposite sign should be of f of x1 and f of x2 should be of opposite sign this is very important for us okay that's why we are putting this condition here f of x1 into f of x2 should be less than zero okay now f of x1 f of x2 should be of opposite sign fine now we place we are drawing a straight line between f of x1 and f of x2 that line happens to intersect our x axis at x3 fine now what we are going to do as far as this f of x3 is concerned this f of x3 is important let's suppose the angle which is being subtended by f of x2 let's suppose this angle is angle theta okay therefore we write slope of line slope of line between slope of line between this x3 comma 0 and f of x2 comma x2 and x2 comma f of x2 is what we are doing i'm talking about what is the slope of the line what is the slope of the line which joins two points one point is x3 comma 0 that is this point its x coordinate is x3 and its y coordinate is 0 and the another point is x2 comma f of x2 that is along x axis we have to go x2 and along y axis we have to go f of x2 that is here what is the slope of this line i mean to say this line this line what is the slope of this line we know the slope of this line is tan theta is equal to tan of theta is perpendicular that is f of x2 from here to here divided by base that is this much okay that is perpendicular is f of x2 divided by the base and the base is this much from here to here and can can't we write this as since this is our origin our origin lies here the distance from here to here is x2 this distance is x2 the distance from here to here is x1 therefore this required distance will be equal x2 minus x1 therefore tan theta becomes perpendicular that is f of x2 divided by x2 minus x1 let's call this as equation number one fine this is okay 
Now, in, in, in the same way, let's also talk about, let's move forward and clean few items here. And this one, this one as well. Okay. What about the slope of the line between also, let's talk about also also slope of line slope of line between two points x1 comma f of x1 and x2 comma f of x2 what is the slope of the line which is joining these two points what is the slope of the line which is joining two points x1 f of x1 and x2 f of x2 where is our x1 f of x1 our x1 f of x1 is here okay and our x2 f of x2 is here okay so we are not talking about this full straight line okay so what is the slope of this line which is joining these two points let me redraw this line to make it more clear let me draw it with another color so the line I'm talking is this line, okay, which was initially drawn with pink color. Okay, what is the slope of this line? Because this is the line which is between the points x1 f of x1 and x2 f of x2, fine. So in order to do this, what we will do, let's reduce it like this, parallel to x-axis, fine. And this we draw perpendicular downwards. Let's say this angle is 90. And we know this angle will also be angle theta. These are corresponding angles. Fine. Therefore, we can write the slope of this line can therefore be written as the slope of this line can be written as it can be written as tan theta. Tan theta is equal tan theta that is tangent of this angle is equal to perpendicular that is this perpendicular fine what is this perpendicular equal to? from here to here it is equal to f of x1 and sorry f of x2 and from here to here it's equal to f of x1 okay but minus because it's on the negative y-axis therefore this total perpendicular is equal to f of x1 sorry f of x2 minus minus of f of x1 the reason is why minus minus will be plus it will be f of x2 plus f of x1 okay this total distance is equal f of x2 plus f of x1 therefore we can write tan theta is we'll write the general definition it's perpendicular which is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by the base as far as the base is concerned how much is the base base is this distance okay so I, I have just stated that the distance from here to here is x2 and the distance from here to here is x1 Therefore, this distance will be x2 minus x1. Fine. Call this as equation number second. Go back to our equation number one. When we are talking about the slope of this line, this line, okay, tan theta will be equal perpendicular. That is f of x2, fine. Divided by base. Base is equal, to, sorry, you have to make a correction here. This is base is this much, okay, which is x2 minus x3 fine not x2 minus x1 there's a correction here fine now we know theta angle is here theta angle is here fine therefore tan of theta and tan of theta are same 
Therefore, from the two equations, what we will obtain? Therefore, from both these equations, from equation 1 and equation 2, we will obtain from equations 1 and 2. The left hand sides are equal, what we will obtain? Their right hand sides will also be equal, fine. Therefore, we can uh, write them as f of x2, f of x2 divided by x2 minus x3 is equal f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Fine. Cross multiply these terms to obtain the value of this x3. Fine. Once we cross multiply and do little algebra, we'll obtain from this equation the value of x3 becomes equal, the value of x3 becomes equal x1 f of x2 minus x2 multiplied by f of x1 divided by f of x2 minus f of x1. Okay, we will obtain x1 f of x2 minus x2 f of x1 divided by f of x2 minus f of x1. This is the value of our x3. Once we have obtained this value of x3, we have to return back to our graph. Fine. That is, uh, let me clean up this diagram first to see what we have to do next. This x3, we have to take it very, very close to x solution. That is, we have to go to an iterative procedure. We have to begin our iterations, which have, all in, in fact, already commenced. Okay. So, what we'll be doing now is, let me redraw the graph. Okay. So, we had it like this. Okay, let me write here. This was our x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the origin. And the graph was somewhat like this. Okay. Somewhere down here we had. This is our x1. And this value is f of x1. This value is x2. And the value of the function there is f of x2 okay and then we have we are drawing a straight line between f of x2 and f of x1 and f of x2 like this which is intersecting our graph at at x3 at x3 we read right okay this is here fine so uh, this was our x1 this is f of x1 this is x2 and f of x2 and the graph or the straight line between is like this. Let me draw it a bit. Let me magnify my figure actually. This is why. Like this. Okay. So this was our X1. This is f of x1, this is x2, and this is f of x2. 
let me draw the line between these two points okay which is intersecting this at x3 okay and this x3 we are obtaining with this formula okay now question is we have two points we have this x3 and we have the actual solution point that is x solution okay this x3 has to approach very very close to x solution so that f of x3 becomes equal to f of x solution becomes equal to zero that's our equations are get satisfied at these very points so once we have obtained in first iteration the value of x3 what we do we'll substitute this value of x3 back into our original equation the equation that we had was y as a function of x is equal to zero now substitute this value of x3 in this equation that is f of x3 okay now we have two things f of x3 cannot be equal to zero this is quite for granted why because at this value because x3 is not our solution right now after first iteration x3 is not our solution right now we have to make we have to place this x3 very very close to x solution okay so straight away x3 cannot be our solution so what we'll be doing once we substitute the value of x3 back into our equation okay this f of x3 it will have f of x3 we will have two things either this f of x3 will be less than zero or this f of x3 will be greater than zero we'll have these two conditions okay so what is this if our f of x3 so what we have done we started with two values we assume two values x1 and x2 fine assuming x1 and x2 we use a little algebra and we obtain the value of x3 fine now this x3 we are substituting back into our equation such that the two possibilities happen out there either our f of x3 will be less than zero or our f of x3 will be greater than zero fine now if f of x3 is less than zero this condition happens okay that is if f of x3 if f of x3 happens to be less than zero what do you mean by f of x3 is less than zero f of x3 happens to be less than zero means your x3 is on the lower side let me draw this figure to make it more clear to you what i mean to say by saying f of x3 is less than zero i mean to say like this draw the line between the two points i will say this is our x1 this is f of x1 this point is this point is x2 and this point is f of x2 okay so the point of intersection of this tangent the point of intersection of the straight line we are calling this point as x3 fine now if you happen if you have a case one f of x3 is less than zero f of x3 means less than zero that means once you substitute the value of x3 back into your equation f of x3 is less than zero that means f of x3 is on the like this is on the lower side fine f of x3 is on this side that is this is f of x3 and this f of x3 is on the negative side of y it's minus that's why we say it's less than zero now if this happens if this f of x3 is less than zero then you have to go to the next iteration and you have to forget this x1 okay and in the next iteration your assumed values will be x3 and x2 okay you have to now take two values two approximation roots will be x3 and x x2 and repeat this process again to obtain the new value of x3 let's call that as x4 fine or 
if this is the case, if your f of x3 is less than zero, f of x3 is less than zero, it's on the negative side, then the new values, new assumed value will be x3 and x2, fine? That is your solution domain is now here. In this domain lies your solution and you know it is here actually, x solution, fine? Or the case can also be f of x3 is not less than zero, but it happens to us that f of x3 is greater than zero. If the condition is f of x3 is greater than zero, what does that mean f of x3 is greater than zero? That means instead of being present, now on this side, f of x3 is greater than zero means x3 will not be now on this side. x3 cannot be now on this side. Okay, the x3 will be now on this side. x3 will be somewhere here. This will be your x3. Why? Because you are saying f of x3 is greater than zero because it's at this very point, your f of x is on the positive y-axis. Okay, so this is f of x3, which is greater than, which is greater than zero. Let me redraw. It was, I was talking about the two conditions, f of x and the line Okay, so I was talking about this. This was my x1. And this is x2. Our x3 was somewhere here. Our x3 was somewhere. Okay, and x3 was here. I told you that if f of x3 is less than zero, that is here, then the new search interval will be from x3 to x2. Okay, this will be in the new search domain, x3 comma x2. If on the other side, f of x3 happens to be greater than zero, okay, that is our x3 is now on this side, f of x3 is greater than zero. Okay, this much is f of x3, which is greater than zero, it is positive then the new search interval will be from x3 to x1 because this is not, x3 is not now here. x3 does not lie here. Okay, x3 lies, x3 lies here. Fine. The new search interval will be now x1 to x3. This is the new search interval. That is from x1 to x3. Okay. So this is the procedure of doing the what we call as the false point method. This is how we have to do the false point method, regular fallacy method. We have to do like this. Okay. So every time we have to obtain fine. Okay. Is this fine? Any problem right now? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, so this is where I will stop today and tomorrow we'll be in next class. We'll be talking about how we use this method to solve the problems. We'll be taking up the problem. Okay, we'll be taking up a question and we'll be solving that with the help of this regular fallacy method. Thank you very much.